Hi, this is Craig Vale, and this is NAM 2010, held in Anaheim at the Convention Center every year, and it's a really fun music thing to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk over this video because there's nothing but NAM noise in the background. That's the Convention Center right there, and uh, we are. Um, it's not a great video quality, so uh, a suggestion to go ahead and stop if there's something that you think that you like. Um, starting right here on the Cannonball booth, um, Cannonball saxophones, uh, the Cannonball clarinets with the uh, yuppie new uh, necks and barrels. Everybody's doing exotic wood uh, necks and barrels now. That's kind of the latest rage. Right there are the uh, Gerald Albright saxophones. Flew by pretty quick. We got some P. Morier over here, and Morier has got um, some beautiful saxophones. The student sax was great. Uh, the they have uh, some, some new plated saxes. Uh, you can hear this guy playing a little bit right now. Uh, it's, it's a nice set of saxes they have. The student sax was a good price range. as Roger Blurry um, from Morier. And I'm heading off to Con Selmer right now trying to find the, uh, what they've got going. But instead, I wander over, and here's the Jupiter booth. Um, what's it say? KMS there. Or KHS America, it's kind of the parent company. Uh, Jupiter has, yeah, I don't care for their saxophones that much, but the uh, I, I always kind of wander over and check out their flutes, alto flute, bass flute. They're one of the companies that seems to always have the larger flutes out. But in the meantime, I'm looking at these flutes. They have a straight bass flute there, um, goes straight down. But what I end up finding, look at this thing. This is a contrabass flute. And I spent a good deal of time. It's it's made by I believe Altus, however you say that. Um, but then there was also a sign that said med medicine or something like that. M e d i c n e or something. Very cool contrabass flute thing. I spent an hour playing it and had way too much fun. Um, summer booth right here. This is the summer con, and uh, so this is more of the student stuff, American stuff, and uh, you know basically decent. Uh, Morier again, swinging around through. This whole section has got, you see France in the background. Um, they have things broke up by country, and then some of the vendors will be out in the generic area next to where they have all the different country breakdown. So um, just, you know, as you see, there's not a whole lot of people. They're checking badges, checking IDs, and so there's not a whole lot of looky-loos sneaking in with Xerox badges or anything like that. Some really bad video quality there. And uh, some guy playing trumpet. Pretty darn exciting. Buffet booth. Um, I don't know uh, what they got by way of trumpets. Obviously, Buffet is known for their clarinets. And in times past, was known for their saxophones. And there's a little saxophone shrine right there. A couple uh, Buffet bare tones. And uh, then alto soprano and tenor saxophones. And... A little clarinet action, bass clarinet, uh, alto clarinet, a whole bunch of B flat and A clarinets. I did not play any of the clarinets, but buffet clarinets are always among the finest in the world. And uh, they're darn pretty to look at. I wish I had the money for one of them big old ones right there. Um, from buffet, I think we went to Selmer Paris, which was right around the corner this year with a surprisingly unimpressive display. Um, in the past, they've had quite a bit more going on. Uh, the big companies had very little going on outside of Yamaha this year. Uh, summer, in the time past, I mean, they had a lot of uh, saxophones, a large display, a large, much larger space. And uh, here they were just set up basically to close some deals and kind of banking off the name and brought out a few of the saxophones to show. And that was kind of the case for... Um, three of the big four makers because that was the case for Kyle Worth even smaller and Yan Yanagizawa very small so you wander through and basically there's just all kinds of vendors all kinds of little companies that have got saxophones and brass and different woodwinds and stuff whoops straighten that puppy out I don't know why that's so ah, that's a beautiful video shot <laughs> My apologies. Okay, and there's a guy playing a Powell. Those were Powell flutes. 
beautiful wood head joints, beautiful um, a couple different cuts on the head joints. Their alto flute that they had over there was a nice alto. I'm coming back to Powell right now. Um, I played a $40,000 gold flute right there. The um, alto flute was, uh, uh, I think she said it retailed around $1,700. It was a really nice alto flute. Nice sound on it for the range, price range. Um, Dakota, one of my favorite places to stop. The I, I, I'm so bad I don't play the regular saxophones. I always run over to the Frankenstein, and I did spend you know a good deal of time playing the Frankenstein. I'll stop talking here. It's a two backs. Bass saxophone. And that's a silver bass. That was my buddy Doug Webb. Doug Webb is a great saxophone player. I went to high school with Doug. I've known Doug for since we both had very different colored hair, and uh, he's a great sax player, and he owns that two backs, and he was there demonstrated for Eppenstiel, or however you say it, a German company. Kyle Worth, check out the incredibly modest display. A couple tenors, a couple altos, and that's it. Um, not, sorry for the video quality again, but um, there was no turnout. Kyle Worth, I, I am hoping that there's a shot of how dinky Yanagazawa was. I'm in the German section here, obviously, with the signman showing the German sign, and just walking through really choppy video, and I apologize. Yeah, of course, you can bail at any time, so it doesn't matter that much. Again, this is Greg Vale, and you're looking at NAM 2010, just this past January. Um, and this is the area where the um, instrumental things are. I believe it's uh, Hall D or E. It's over a ways. And uh, me and Jay Mason. Um, and then uh, Jay and I went to high school also with Doug Webb. And Jay plays Barry Sax in the uh, Big Fat Band and numerous other projects and stuff. Very fine saxophone player. So here's here we are in China, looking at China stuff. And it's just all kinds of rinky-dink little companies with rinky-dink little instruments and stuff. Um, a lot of wood stuff. The woodwork looks great. I don't know what any of those... You know, I'm not a string player. I don't know what any of that sounds like. But there's lots and lots of stuff there. And I see some saxophones again. But I have no idea where we are. Wandering. All right, looks like we found our way to, at the end, that was uh, the... Uh, booth where Kenny G was hanging out um, that was the beautiful sky at the end of the one day I had on the floor to check out NAM NAM 2010, Greg Vale thanks for watching the clip um, just a couple quick things just a little bit of the sights and the sounds you can find me on YouTube you can find me on Flickr Photos GV Sax Boy and then SaxPlayerBlog.com so there is stuff out there check it out and thank you for watching hope to see you soon